Howdy. My name is Chelsea Louie, or I go by the handle Chelsea Lou Who Art Online. This is my first YouTube video where I'll be showing you the process of how I ink and do line work on my traditional drawings. Before we start though, I want to state that I'm not a professional instructor. Even though I have been drawing and doing art my whole life, this is more of just a video on my personal style of how I like to do things. I started this channel to maybe help encourage others to do more art and drawing if it's something that you're interested in. Even if you think you're maybe not that good, I definitely feel that way too sometimes. And I will tell you one thing that really, really helps me is if you are working on a sketch or a drawing and you feel like it's not looking perfect, which is totally fine. It won't at first. Um, you should take a break, go take a walk, go get something to drink, go get some coffee or whatever. I love coffee. I drink a lot of coffee. Um, maybe even put it down for the day, the night, and I promise you once you come back the next day, um, you'll either see, you'll either feel better about it and see that it's not as bad as you thought. You just need to give your eyes some rest or you will see things that you you can see the things that you need to improve on so taking breaks is definitely good because I know people will say that they like my art and stuff but I am always my worst critic and sometimes I'm like eh, I don't know about that but um don't feel discouraged because you're going to be drawing a lot if you if this is something that you're like really uh serious about interested in um mostly just have fun if you make a mistake um just start over just do a lot of sketches um let's see don't be afraid to watch or seek out tutorials for different techniques and experimenting i will probably be linking and talking about like a couple of different tutorials and things that i've seen personally down below um as an artist you're always going to be taking inspiration from other artists that you see. Um, so don't be afraid to watch tutorials and start out by trying to copy what they're doing um, with their techniques because after a while you'll incorporate all those other things into your art, which is what I've done. Um, I'm not sure if I really have like my own style yet or whatever, but that's okay. I just make art and have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Um, part of the process is trying out a bunch of different things and see what works for you. And with that, we're going to get started today. Um, today I'm going to be uh, doing a line work, ink work uh, process of just what I do on the titular character Chainsaw Man because he's super cool is all the rage right now. So let's get started. All right, so we're gonna get started here. This is the Chainsaw Man drawing that I will be working on today. We're gonna be inking him. Um, this is my power drawing that I did previously before I started my YouTube channel. This is um, a good idea of what the final drawing of the Chainsaw Man is going to look like. I did them both in a neo-traditional style, which I am very new to. Um, I've never tried to draw anything like that with the lines and the faces and everything like that. I, um, especially for the cat, I... Just went on Google and Googled Neo-Traditional Style Cat and got some inspiration on drawing my cat for my flowers. Um, like I said, um, these are peonies. I watched a tutorial video on how to draw them because I am not very good at drawing flowers. It's something like new to me and especially since I haven't done the Neo-Traditional Style, I wanted to do... I needed a, a tutorial to look up on how to do it, um, since it's something new to me. So I will have in the description um, a link for Chris Garver's Japanese peony tutorial video. It's a really well done video. He talks about, um, or he shows you really how to draw a peony. One very simple and then one 
more with more like detail and everything and mine don't look as good as his but um it was my first time doing it and i assume that he draws them all the time so don't be discouraged to you if you're trying to follow a tutorial or something and yours doesn't turn out exactly like the video that you're watching because the people who are making the videos probably this is something that they draw like all the time so i will have that video linked in the description if you're interested in it um all right so we're gonna go ahead and get started here so i will say to well yeah, i will show you um what i have as far as materials what i use i use <clears throat> these micron pigma sakura pens and i have looked up prices for them online let me see if i can grab the box so you can see what the box looks like i have the um the six pack of pens and inside this is a little messed up it has the line weights on here and this i like the six pack of pens it comes with like a wide variety of um different sizes i definitely use the 20 millimeter one a lot and then the rest of these it really depends on how big the piece is um which which size pen you're gonna use if you're gonna be doing a huge piece like on like take up this whole paper with just one drawing you might want to use a thicker pen um maybe even move up the smaller pen one to like a 25 millimeter one 1.25 millimeter one um so this is what i use uh for inking um and then i will show you what i do in a later video i use a different set of pens these pens are pretty much only good if you're just drawing them directly onto the paper they might work on acrylic paint or they will work on marker if you put them on what i use are these um prisma color pencils if you try to put these pens on top of this they're going to get clogged up very easily they get clogged up very easily if you put them on top of anything that's really not a uh, paper and pencil um so these uh is what i usually use for coloring because it gives it a really nice thick rich looking color pretty much like this um, these pencils are very rich and they're very waxy, so they're going to get caught in your pens. So I would recommend only using these pens on the paper. They're safe to put over like markers. Um, they won't get clogged by that. But um, I would recommend buying these off of Amazon. On Amazon, they are $12.95. For the six pack um there's different packs on there there's ones with like brushes for like more manga type stuff comic book type stuff um so there's all different kinds of pens this is just what i use there's different pens out there um to use for your line work um for me they're great they don't um really bleed a lot and it does come with the very very tiny little I can't make it focus very tiny little needle point for all those really fine details and then again it comes in a variety pack this one is a bigger one this is the size 3 so that'll be 0.35 millimeters all right so we're gonna go ahead and get started um we're gonna start we already have our sketch and I will say with my sketch, um, I might have to go back in with a pencil and an eraser to kind of give it more details and stuff. I sometimes when I do my sketches, I don't put in all the details like right here on his neck. These are going to be a, a lot more um, like wires. And everything going in his neck. Um, 
So some details too, like um, on the peony, I didn't draw these like little fine lines and stuff on here. I like to just draw them in whenever I'm done inking it, honestly. So there's some details in here and like the, um, the little pieces on her face and everything. Well, I'll definitely add some of those in here. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so yeah, I like to, I don't know, it really depends on where I like to start. Um, I kind of just like move around the paper, whatever I feel like is like already like super clean looking. You want to make your sketch and then you're going to want to clean it up so that it pretty much om almost looks finished because when you do the lines, you want it so that you can just trace over the lines like super easy, no problem without like second guessing yourself. So I'll go ahead and get our pen out and we're gonna go ahead and get started and so the flower it's pretty much how i like it we're just gonna go ahead and we're going to start inking this flower and um also i do apologize for my camera rig i definitely will have to uh, save up money and invest in the future to get a better camera setup all right so just like in these ones, I'm going to outline all the thickest parts. And for the peonies, when I uh, outline them, I kind of, uh, if I didn't like how I did it, I will just kind of like make like a, um, make like a little wavy thing to improve it to make it better this is um uh, more so when you do a lot of art um when you get like more into it it's more like kind of like a, um like a guideline of where you want your lines to be you're even going to be changing things too when you're getting into inking Alright, so I got some more in there. I honestly don't like how I just did that, but um, that's okay. Oh well, we're going to um, continue. I actually did make a mistake in this part right here where this leaf is like in her hair and how I'm gonna fix that when I color, I don't know, but it it's fine. Um, most people won't notice that tiny little mistake. So... And honestly, I kind of really don't like how this flower is turning out right now anyway, but that's okay. Um, a problem I have really is being a perfectionist and paying way too much attention to every single little detail. Because when you look at this drawing um, of power, uh, you can't really tell that I made a couple mistakes on there. Maybe this cat's a little too chonky, but uh, whatever, <laughs> it's fine. The overall piece looks pretty solid, so I you know I'm gonna try not to beat myself up over it too hard. Um, yes, we'll just continue to work on the start. Um, once you got your sketch down, you already know where all your lines are. Um, so turn turn your paper any way that you really need to to make sure that you're getting really nice smooth lines
this can be probably the most nerve-wracking part of a drawing is making sure that you got your nice clean lines and I will say to um, these pens don't bleed a lot I'll show you right here if if you need to work like really slowly you can because this lines the ink doesn't bleed a, a lot so it's not gonna if you have it held down on your paper for a long period of time it's not going to bleed and cause trouble like a marker would so with these pens you can really take your time until you get more comfortable and also the more comfortable you get the more fast you'll become Be turning your paper a lot. So now that I'm getting into this part, it's like a, a different, no, a different part of the paper, like uh, the chainsaw on Chainsaw Man's head. Um, in a second here, I will be working on this instead because I want this to be like really clean. This piece, this part, to stand out. So, and it's on top, it's overlapping these flowers, so I'll be doing this first, and then I will come back to those little flower pieces in a second. see I made a tiny little mistake right there the overlaps right there that's okay um so I'm pretty much just uh doing uh I'm just doing the um I'm like holding it up and stuff because my camera situation is not the best right now um so it's easier to see but when you're doing these really long um straight pieces you're going to want to have it definitely flat on the paper so that you can move your hand around. And maybe I'm just not realizing I should have set my camera up on the other side of my desk <laughs> because I am I I am right-handed. Um, all right, hang on a second, and I will do that. All right, so I'm sorry about that. I have moved my camera so that you will be able to see the drawing process a lot better. Um, also, if you're going to get into drawing and everything and you're an artist, uh, you have to have a messy desk. That is part of it. You have to have your, your pencils and everything just everywhere all the time. That's how it works. <laughs> so let's continue here. I just got to draw this one last leaf and then we will start doing Chainsaw Man.
All right. So, honestly, the detail work to me is a lot easier, and doing these long straight lines are what make me nervous. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so to start on him, I'm actually gonna do this little hole right here first. Um, because that's what it, this is coming out of. Like I said, don't be afraid to move your paper around as you need to. But here we go. So I was tell you on this side. Um, when I'm drawing these lines, it, there, it doesn't have to be um, perfect on my sketch if my sketch isn't like super refined. So like I did on that other side, I'm going to start on the outside, and then for this inner line, wherever I start on here. I'm just going to make sure that when I'm dragging it along, it's about that that far apart the whole time that I'm on here. It doesn't need to follow the lines. It'll look a lot better if you just visualize this black line and how thick this second line needs to be. Because if you try to copy your line on here, then this inside line, it might make it bigger or smaller at points. So, I need to adjust my paper again. It's <laughs> definitely not perfect. This is a pretty hard angle to draw on. But you'll see, hopefully, with the final project product, you won't even notice. So maybe it's good that I'm making some mistakes. And I mean, it can, it doesn't have to be super perfect too. Like it's um, a little bit thicker right here, and that's okay. That 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 makes sense. And then it's a little thinner right here. You just don't want this line to be thinner, longer, and stuff like that. All right, that looks um, not that great, but that's okay. This is like a new setup for me and everything. So the lines probably aren't gonna turn out as clean as this one that I just did on my own without filming a video. All right, now we're gonna do the little spikies on this chain. And you want to draw things that are in the foreground of your drawing first, the top part. 
um, so that you don't make little mistakes like I did here with the leaf overlapping the hair. So if you draw everything that's on top first, then when you draw the underneath stuff, it has like a lower chance of overlapping. And again, turn your page, turn your paper as much as you need to. One other thing that I will say right now, now that I think about it, is I do like to draw um, in a sketchbook. A sketchbook has a lot of padding with all the paper underneath to make it the surface like a lot softer. This is just a personal thing that I like. Um, if you draw on your desk or something um uh, it might have like all these like a little eraser pieces that i have everywhere if you draw on if you put a paper on top of that and you draw over it then you'll get bumps in your art so if you're gonna draw on your desk totally fine just make sure that your desk is a, like what if it's like would have like a little porous pieces in it or if you have like these little eraser pieces or anything make sure that your desk is like clean before you do your inking so that you get like really nice clean lines. Um, it sucks when you've been working on a piece for like a long time and then you get to the inking part and it's um, and it's a little messed up there. I knew I made another tiny little mistake right there. It's not super noticeable but that's okay. Now we can come back and do the flower underneath so that we didn't accidentally draw the flower on top of the chainsaw man. It looks like my lines are really shaky. I have this big tall lamp literally right next to me. It's kind of distracting. That's okay. So we're only going to do like these main parts with the thicker line pen. So as you go to, you can definitely add little details in there to help you with drawing the rest of your lines. So I want this little part right here to be drawn with the tiny fine liner pen. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and draw that real quick so that this line is going to be used as a guide for 
this little vent piece around where his eye is. Oh, you can see my face. Sorry. <laughs> see her I'm really taking my time on this part and hopefully when I'm done with the final thing then you can see some of my lines aren't really straight and perfect and all of that but that's that's okay most people's eyes aren't going to immediately be drawn to the tiny tiny little imperfections of your drawing Let's do the teeth next. I'm going to draw them a little bit more curved actually than I did in my sketch. that's like more of like a neo-traditional style so you can always make changes too and we'll just make this Th that tooth like a little bit longer than the other ones um he's got some gross looking teeth honestly so it's fine um to make them a little, a little more cool you can make them all they don't have to be uniform you know um that's that's kind of like a thing too depending on like what kind of character you're drawing and stuff if you're drawing like a more I don't know crazy scary kind of character then the lines really don't have to be perfect and it really doesn't have to be uniform because it gives it a lot more character So again, there would be tiny little details around the gums and this little area right there that's like the outline of his mouth, but we're going to not do that part right now.
I right, saved his tongue for last because all of his teeth are going to be overlapping that. I am taking a lot more time than I was when I very first started with the flower. <laughs> what's going on with that to be honest um i'm gonna just draw a few more little parts that i'm definitely keeping and then i will do these flowers and then we'll maybe draw a little bit more in the neck area uh it's not fully fleshed out yet sometimes it's better to get a lot of your lines in there first and then either erase it and redraw it or tweak it and see what it'll look like So I drew this line in here. I didn't mean to draw that, but that's okay. Usually I save the inside lines for like the details, but that's okay. It looks like it's like kind of folded over a little bit.
And again, it's just my personal choice to have like different weighted lines. You could do all of it in one size if you wanted to. And for the flowers too, I need to work on having like more variation because each one of my leaves kind of looks the same. <sighs> um, I'm not too sure what that is right there. Okay, so we got that flower done. We're gonna work on the leaves. Now this flower is overlapping him, so I wanted to get these done first. Um, this little bit was supposed to be part of this leaf, but I think it would look cool to add another little leaf there. And it is better to do your line in all one stroke. Try to do that if you can. Try to make sure that your hand can go from point A to point B before you do it. Otherwise, if you have like a little tiny gap there and you try to go over it and connect the two, then it usually doesn't look as good as if you were to just draw the full line. But that's okay if you have to do that. You can even use your smaller size needle pen to connect the line so that you're not going over it, if that makes sense. Okay, we'll go to our last flower here. And these wires are really fun to draw because you can do the petals in all different kinds of shapes and make them all wavy and different. I feel like their peonies are a really fun flower to draw because they don't, they don't have to be perfect for them to look good. And it's, um, it's just a really popular flower to draw with the neo-traditional style. And like I said earlier, this was um, something new for me to draw. I always like to um, 
I like to go on Google and just Google image search, just things, whatever I want to draw and or a particular style and just look at other people's art and I look at a lot of people's art on Instagram and Twitter and see what they're doing and see if there's any like little tiny different things that I could incorporate into my own drawings try out that look really cool. I'm not doing it with this drawing, but I did um, two drawings. I did um, Jerry and Chun Li from Street Fighter, and I saw an artist, which unfortunately I can't remember which artist I saw do this. I think I saw them on Instagram. If I ever find out, I will link them in my video. Um, but I was just scrolling and I saw them do like um, this really cool thing where they had where they used a different color pen to do like the background. I did like these little waves but I did them in like gold and it looked really cool. I have those drawings on my Instagram. And so you can see on this leaf, I didn't have my sketch very definitive on it, so this leaf didn't turn out how I wanted it to be. The cleaner your sketch is, the better your line work's going to turn out. Not better, but it's going to look exactly how you've drawn your sketch. So the more refined your sketch is, the more your actual finished line work is going to look exactly like that. Um, for me, it really depends on if I'm going to go willy-nilly or not. And... This is another thing. If See how the flower is underneath his chin? If my flower underneath doesn't look really that great. If you wanted your flower petal to look more better, <laughs> if you wanted it to look better than this, then I would um, keep drawing the flower underneath it and then I would only trace over those parts so that you can make sure all of these pieces in the flower like actually look like they're connected to each other so there you go I'd, since i drew it on actually drew out the whole entire flower petal i think that looks a lot better So since this petal is on top of all of these other petals, I'll start with this one.
Also, pro tip, I didn't want to draw his, um, his shirt. <laughs> I'm really not good at drawing like shirt collars and stuff. That's something I really need to um, practice more. Um, if you don't want to, just draw some crap on top of it. <laughs> I drew these flowers. So I didn't have to draw that. If you don't like drawing hair or hands or anything, try to draw your sketch or drawing so that you don't have to. <laughs> Um, it, it is a good thing to practice though, for sure. Alright, so we're almost done. Now we just gotta do this part, his neck, head area, back of the head, and then, uh, the background. So... Mine isn't as detailed in this area as others are, but that's okay. Um, I think that would actually make for probably a better tattoo at keeping it like simpler and I, I think it does actually go with the style the neo traditional style so we'll just go ahead and do these bits and bobs details of whatever this is all right i already messed up that's okay we'll just fix it we'll just make it we'll just make it look good i already accidentally went over two different lines. <laughs> well, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. It's all good. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I drew these two lines as like little little bumpy things, um, so it looks a little bit more three dimensional here instead of it just being one long flat line. All right, so the only thing I didn't really actually finish drawing was the, like all the little wires in his neck. 
there's this, these two like little things. I didn't draw them like um, going underneath this belt. So maybe I'll finish that up. That would just make a lot more sense, I think. So. I don't know. Every, I, I did look up a lot of references about Chainsaw Man and there were a whole bunch of different, um, like, renditions of him. They all look different the way that they drew. All the different pieces inside of his head um even with like the manga and all the different pictures of the manga they were different it's different between the manga and the anime so this was like this was like a kind of a really cool fun character to draw because you can really draw him however you want there's all different kinds of styles and stuff so i got some kind of reference lines in here already and now we're just going to refine them and draw some more little details in here because if I just started going and inking it like this you could um for me I I choose not to I like my sketches to be really refined not not like a hundred percent of the way because sometimes i get stuck and i don't like the way something looks um but i do definitely like my drawings to be a lot more refined so i can just go ahead and put the ink on there pretty quickly and not have to worry about messing up And another thing is, is we're going to have like a whole bunch of different wires like going over each other. And then you can just draw the lines so that they look good. They match up on both sides and then just erase which one you want to go underneath. And we're going to make them look all crazy and messy here. And I definitely will have um, a sketching tutorial. I don't know what I'm going to draw for that one yet, but... Maybe we'll have... Maybe those will be all the, the thick lines. I'll draw like one more. Maybe we'll have those be all thick and then we'll draw lots of other littler ones in here with the the finer like pencil. And I was thinking about drawing some more like detailed stuff here, but maybe we'll add that later. I just almost forgot to draw this like exhaust pipe kind of thing. See, my lines are already a lot more confident and better than they were when I first started. I'll draw this little part too. Thank you. 
And also, I'm not super good at drawing, like, <laughs> robot technology kind of stuff. That's not really my style. But there are some people out there who are, like, really good at designing characters like that with lots of really intricate armor and cyborg type characters. If you're into that, you should definitely do your own style of Chainsaw Man. Because I'm pretty sure um, you, could, you can go as simple or intricate as you want and it'd look awesome. good now. Now we're gonna do the background real quick. I like to do these like uh, I don't know like these swoopy like ribbon type stuff to like kind of frame it and bring it all together. And if this is something you want to do you're more than welcome to. Um, I'm sure there's like a lot more different creative ways that you can draw them to. And again, I like messed up because there's like this really fat piece and then it's somehow supposed to go into like this little piece. I would just draw on top of all this. Maybe you want to draw a chainsaw man and like your flowers and then ink them and then erase all the lines and then draw the background. So it looks better than that. So I didn't do it with the power one, but for the chainsaw man, I'm drawing like kind of like a watery, liquidy type thing in these ribbons because chainsaw man is a pretty bloody anime. So I'm going to definitely color the ribbon on this one red and I want it to make it look like blood. <laughs> Maybe we can draw some more of these. So 
So, honestly, those sketch wasn't as refined as I had liked it to be, but that's okay. So this little part right there, that's gonna be like a like a opening kind of part. So I'm going to line that with my thick liner. And I forgot to draw it right here too. So, um. I'm going to take my eraser, which this is a uh, Pentel click eraser. These things are super cool. They last for a long time. I got like a three pack of these. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and erase a lot of these pencil lines so I can easier see what I'm doing. Um, ideally, if I took a lot more time on this piece like I should have um I would do this before I drew in the background um another thing is I have been doing art my whole entire life and I see people do this and I haven't started doing it until like my last two or three pieces get um a really nice soft paintbrush makeup brush whatever they're super cheap <laughs> you can buy them anywhere and brush off uh, any ex excess uh, pencil or eraser, shavings, pencil dust. And this is like super important too if you're using like uh, the Prismacolor pencils because there's tiny little color pencil bits that will get everywhere. And if you run your hand over it, then that'll be in your paper and it won't come out. But I will touch on that next time when we do a coloring. So I'm going to start from here. This is what I should have done, honestly, for the whole background. And I'm going to... I'm just going to make this, like, super simple. Connect them super simple. Nothing super fancy right now. Um, I don't know if any of this one's going to really show through. I guess not. So that that is a way to make sure that all of your lines connect so that they look super nice and cohesive and like they actually would connect underneath these flowers. Um, I should have done that for like the whole drawing, but I didn't, which is okay. <laughs> it's it still looks uh, fine, you know. So then I'm gonna take my my pen and it looks like there's not any right here on the top piece that I can see and if I just look, follow this line I can see it pokes out right here a little bit right there and there you go um also super important before you erase or anything let your ink dry before you do anything else with it let it dry these dry like really fast so it only takes a couple of seconds since um 
this top part is dry, we're going to go ahead and erase that so we get all the pencil off our drawing. And we'll get to see what what it looks like. Which is the exciting part. Don't erase, um, don't just jam your eraser in there and erase it as hard as you can. You want to kind of make it like light. And this is also a new thing that I'm like just not realizing myself. Um, if you erase it, it's like super, super hard. Then you can actually tell these lines will get erased like a little tiny, tiny bit. They won't like get erased, but they'll become like a lot more, um, they'll lose like their opacity and stuff. They're gonna not be as dark and black. Um, if you press really hard, you don't need to press super hard. New erase. Um, some of these details that I haven't gone over yet, I might want to keep like a little bit of them as sort of like a guide, a reference. But yeah, it doesn't have to be super perfect. You're racing because you'll, you'll do like a second or third pass of the eraser before you uh, do anything else with your drawing. Okay, now it's been a while, so this part, this is like the latest part I did. It should be good and dry. And it is. Again, don't erase super, super hard. Or some of your lines won't be as dark as you like them. Um, you want to. You could definitely try any of this stuff on a piece of paper. Draw some, draw some lines and then erase them kind of hard. Put some pressure on there. And um, see what it does to it. It might even be like um, a cool effect if it's not something you're going for, actually. Um, it's all about experimenting and trial and error. Alright, so I got most of my lines erased. Good enough. Um, it's okay if you're still just the eraser part and you want to pick it up and dust it off with your hands um but if you put like crayon pencil paint anything else on there you do not want to use your hands because it will smudge everywhere um it's best to have like a separate piece of paper which i don't do but it's always a good idea to have a separate piece of paper that you put over it put your hand on so that you're not getting like your oils from your hands and smudging stuff everywhere on your paper so the last thing that we're gonna do is get our small needle liner um, before we do that actually we should draw some details so i had to google like um a bunch of different kind of art i just go to google images and i just type in neo-traditional tattoos and i just look and see what what things that they all have like in common and a common thing to do is wherever you would have like highlights or like dark areas like um on power the bottom jar right here and this this part on her cheekbone this would be dark parts and then like maybe her chin would be highlighted and then the top of her nose would be highlighted and then the bottom of her nose would be dark um whenever there's highlights or darkness like shadows that's where you want to draw like fancy little doodle lines i guess um 
super cool style never really done it before so let's see we'll just draw some more kind of like reference lines for our little pen and this I do like to do after it's done you're done with the big one maybe maybe right here there's a line and this goes like in kind of so you can draw like a, like a little highlighted area I don't know this drawing is like really weird and new for me so it's like fun to experiment and try new things Maybe something like that. I don't know. It doesn't have to be perfect, I, I think. They're just kind of like reference lines of like the different shapes and stuff. So if you were to like totally, if you were to like, maybe I should have kept my sketch, I don't know. some lines I'm drawing so I don't forget some of the lines. Maybe on his tongue, his tongue's gonna be like <clears throat> shiny. Um, his teeth. His teeth are gonna like have shininess to them. I think, um, as far as I've seen, this style is just kind of contouring the highlights and shadows of a drawing. I really don't like how I, <laughs> the line work on the chainsaw turned out, but that's okay. Maybe we'll color it pretty dark to kind of hide that. Just draw different stuff and see what you like better. Probably good for now. All right. So now we're finally gonna get our little fine liner, and I like to start with like the flowers. So just like with these flowers, anything like that's on the inside of the petal, I'll go like. 
all the way through one. Um, showing like motion of what, which direction the flowers are going. And I like to, um, this is just me. I like to draw some lines like really close together and then some like far away from each other. I don't like it to be uniform at all. And then the underside of it, I just draw some little ones. I show the flower petals like flipping upwards. And I like to start with like the little small lines and work my way to the bigger lines because after a while I start feeling um, more confident with my lines. And you don't want to go into the really long lines feeling like a little shaky. I like putting detail even in the these little tiny areas. again it doesn't have to look perfect so that's what like a finished flower looks like now when i do the leaves i like to draw them from the tips in a downward angle um for me personally um they don't have to be symmetrical on either side either I like to draw some groups and then I like to draw some just big old lines by themselves. And you can draw them kind of curved as they go down the leaf too to show direction.
all the tiny little details are really my favorite part to draw. It just really brings it from a an alright line work, I think, to give it a lot more depth and personality. And usually the detail, the fine like little lines are really pretty short and easy to draw. Give it one more like a little close line right there. Alright, for this flower, maybe I'll draw like another like little set of leaves right here. This one doesn't have as much leaves as my other one does. Um, that's okay. Got something that is underneath the flower, something that we can add later. Thank you. 
Oh no. They rigged my camera up, but I just put my um uh, my uh webcam taped it to my uh, lamp. <laughs> I'll definitely be investing in uh, better equipment when I can. I apologize for that. Almost done, we're getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and work on the detail in his head. <laughs> um, now, real quick. to give him kind of like a anime slash um an anime slash neo-traditional uh drawing kind of like little details here i'm not going to connect like all of the lines that's more of like a manga anime style but we're still going to use the pen on them as like the neo-traditional style so we're kind of like just combining both styles here. Maybe some of them will be like almost all the way connecting.
I really like doing the details. I like I like drawing like scary monsters and I like doing their their mouths and their teeth especially. That's like the first thing that your eyes go to. I like drawing them scary. <laughs> All right, we're almost done. We'll give um, some of these wires a little bit of detail. Um, you want to draw the lines a little round to show that they're like tubes. And again, with like my flower petals, I'm going to draw some of the lines closer together and then some of them further away. And they definitely do not have to be perfect. This is the fun part where you can just kind of brainlessly just draw lines. And I like to turn off my brain during this part because you don't want, you don't want every single one to look exactly the same. All right, um, last thing I got to do is just draw some lines like I did in power, just some little little detail lines in my fancy frame, <laughs> if you will. I already drew one right there, right here. And 
And now these are usually the lines that I save for last because they're a lot longer, they're a lot harder to control. So I personally like saving them for last because um, I feel confident about doing all these like little lines because I've been sitting here and I've been doing lines for a couple hours now. Now I feel pretty ready and confident to do these longer lines. And since I didn't plan it out, we got this going on. That's okay. draw an extra little line right here an extra little line right here that'll come out right here and just fade in there like that I don't know if I should draw any more like um little wires in his neck or not. I'm not sure about that yet. So, um, like I said in the beginning of my video, it's always good to take breaks. So if this is something that I'm not sure of, um, I actually have something I gotta go do in a minute. Um I'll leave it here for now instead of trying to do it right now and rush it and when I come back or tomorrow or whenever I'll look at it and I promise you if you're feeling stumped if you take a break and then you come back to it then it'll it'll look a lot better or you'll see your mistakes what you can improve on You'll see what you can improve on if you haven't, haven't inked it already. Um, if you're doing paint, you can always paint over it. If it's a sketch, that's super easy to change. Taking breaks is really good to refresh your eyes because if you're sitting here and you're just staring at the same piece of paper for hours on end, it's not going to look any different. So. We're gonna go ahead and erase all of our lines on here and see how it turned out. Um, there is actually one little tiny thing I forgot. I just forgot to do all of these little, little detail lines. He wouldn't be Chainsaw Man if he didn't have a chain on his saw, right?
All right. So this is my finished inking of Chainsaw Man. I know it might be a little hard to tell on this camera, but I do think that the power came out a lot better with the, as far as the lines go. I took a lot more time on the lines, like the flowers and all the details in her hair and stuff, but I did that one without recording a video, so honestly I was a little nervous at first when I first started. You can see right here I made a huge mistake on the chain, on the chainsaw, but that's okay. Overall, I think it turned out pretty good. Um, I'll just draw probably like another leaf or something right here. Um, the sketch I also didn't refine as much as I did with power. Um, kind of played this one by ear a little bit and bits and pieces of it, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how I go about inking my my drawings um and yeah these are definitely going to be drawings that i will make as printable pdf so if you want your own power or chainsaw man or i'm gonna have chun li and jerry i'm gonna have a bunch of different drawings um once i put them in digital um for you to print out and color yourself so yeah there we go so thanks again for watching. I definitely already have like a lot more videos planned out where I'm going to be going over like sketching, um, coming up with ideas, how to make sketches and stuff, line work, coloring, definitely um, anything else you guys can think of. Uh, please consider subscribing and like my video if you enjoyed drawing with me today. In the future, I am definitely going to be launching a Patreon shop uh, if you want to support me financially. I'm definitely going to be having like a lot of goodies on there um, that you can get, stickers. I'm going to have like a printable PDF files that you can download. Like um, they're going to be like coloring pages, like a coloring book. And it's just going to be like line work of my drawing. And you can pr just print them out at home and work on your shading, your coloring skills. Or if you just like coloring, you're more than welcome to that. I'm going to have like... Um, sign prints for my highest tier patrons where you can uh I, I hopefully I'll have like a couple of different options starting out and you can pick which one you like the best um again there's no obligation to support me um my socials I do have uh Instagram Twitter and Facebook so if you can't support me financially that helps like a lot too my Instagram right now is pretty much like my portfolio and I'll have all that linked in the description and on my YouTube banner on my page. Um, I also do have my email on my description for commissions if you're interested in commissioning some artwork from me. I will also have in my description whether commissions are open or closed which is always subject to change. Um, and I just want to thank you again for joining me and I hope that you had you know, like my content and you think that it's fun and relaxing and entertaining and I hope maybe you want to pick up a pencil and draw with me too. And also feel free to comment any ideas, any topics or anything that you would like me to cover in the future if you're struggling with something or you want to see, I don't know, things that I use and stuff. I will make sure that I have um, everything linked in the description of each video and I just want you guys to have a great day or great night wherever you are right now and I will see you in the next one.